Today we're going to talk about installing Plone using Buildout. If you're happy to install Plone using one of the installers available from the Plone.org website, you can skip this screencast, but you may want to watch the one on how to use Buildout to make products available to your Plone. Everything I'm going to talk about today is documented on the WebLine wiki on the Buildout page. There's also more documentation at plone.org in the documentation section. Buildout is the recommended way of installing Plone for production and for serious development environments. When you run a modern Plone installer for the latest version of Plone, it actually uses Buildout behind the scenes. Today, I'm going to show you how to run a Buildout to install Plone on Mac and Unix-like systems. The WebLine Wiki also contains instructions about how to run Buildout on Windows. Before you can run a Buildout on Mac and Unix-like systems, you need some prerequisites installed. These are outlined on the WebLine Wiki, and I'm not going to go through in detail how to install them. Essentially, you need the developer tools for Mac, you need the right version of Python, you need something called Easy Install, and you need to use Easy Install to install Zopscale. Once you've installed all these things, you're ready to go. The next thing to do is to decide where on your file system you want to have Plone living. The installer puts Plone into a folder in your Applications folder, but you don't have to do that. You can put it anywhere. I personally have a folder within my Documents folder where I put all my build-outs. You could do that, or you could put it somewhere else. So I'm actually going to put my build-out into a folder alongside all my other build-outs. You'll notice that I have many build-outs on my machine. You can have as many as you like, as long as your disk is big enough. So I've decided where I'm going to put Plone. I now change directory to the relevant place in Terminal. OK, now I'm in the right place. Once there, I run the command that's under Step 5 on the instructions on the WebLine wiki. Paster create minus T, the minus T stands for template, clone 3 build out, and then the name of whatever I want my build out to be called. I'm going to call this one demo. I hit return, and then the machine thinks for a little bit, and it asks me a series of questions. Um, I'm going to um, get it to install a standalone copy of Zope in my um, new instance. Uh, I'm going to accept the defaults for where it puts Plone products. Uh, this is something you have to pay attention to. Um, what you have to enter here is the details um, of uh, an admin user. Um, so I'm going to say that the admin user should be called admin. And then I have to enter a password for the admin user. So let me type that in right now. Um, and then uh, I need to say uh, which port I want to, uh, Zoop to run on. Um, the default is 8080, so I'll accept that for now. You can change all these things at any point later. Um, this is just the defaults, and um, if you don't like them, don't worry. If you type the wrong thing in here, you can change it at any point. Should debug mode be on or off? Well, this is a development environment um, I'm making, um, so it doesn't really matter. If you are making a production site, you absolutely want debug mode to be off. Um, I'm going to say off myself. Verbose security, again, the default is off, and you should probably accept off if you're going to um, be making a build out for a production environment. And then um, some magic happens behind the scenes. So let's just pop over to the file system to see what's happened. Um, there's the folder that's just been created. So following directions on the WebLine wiki, we need to change directory into the folder we've just created and then run something called Bootstrap. So let me just do that. Um, I'm on Leopard on a Mac and the native version of Python that Leopard uses is uh, a 2.5, Python 2.5. Um, I don't want to run uh, this command using my native version of Python. 
I want to run it using uh, Python 2.4 because that's what uh, is required for Plone. So I have set my system up so that um, I can use the command Python 2.4 to call the relevant version of Python to run this particular Python script. There we are. So I'm now going to run the bootstrap.py script. There it goes. Um, and you can see it's um, added a few things to that demo folder. Let's just pop across to the finder and uh, see those things. Uh, that's one of the things it added. That's another thing and so on. OK, so now we're ready to run build out um, itself. Uh, this has all been the preparation for, for running a build out. A build out um, is a recipe. Uh, and the recipe sits in this build out config file. Um, there it is. But for now, I'm just going to run uh, what's been given me out of the box. And to do that, I type bin build out. I could just uh, run it like this, uh, or I could put a number of different flags on it. Um, I can use a, a dash v flag to get verbose output while I'm running build out. I could use a dash n flag to force the machine to go and find newer versions of everything. And there are various other flags uh, which are all outlined um, on the WebLine wiki and on the plone.org website. For now, I'm not going to use any flags. I'm just going to run it as is. Um, this will take rather a long time, so we're going to have a bit of a timeout. OK, build out's now finished. It took a few minutes and generated a lot of output in the terminal window. Here's some of it. Let's just take a quick look at the file system, uh, and you can see that it's created a whole heap of new folders. Uh, here's some of them. For example, it's created a folder called Plone, in which are all of the products that Plone out of the box relies on. So build out has run successfully, and now we're ready to start Zope. To start Zope, uh, we type bin instance and then we can type something like start if we want to run zoop in normal mode as you would for production or we can start zoop in what's called foreground mode in which you get lots of verbose output to the terminal uh, this is ideal for, de for development so that's what I'm going to do today and to start in foreground mode I type bin slash instance space fg for foreground When Zope is ready, it gives you a message to that effect in the terminal window. So now we can go to our web browser and call up our Zope. To do that, we uh, type into the URL bar localhost colon 8080, which, if you remember, is the port we entered earlier on. This takes us to a screen that shows us that, yes, indeed, Zope is running. But what we want is the Zope management interface. And to access that, we type in the URL bar manage underscore main. We now get asked to log in with the username and password that we specified earlier. And this takes us to the Zope management interface, the root of Zope. The sharp-eyed among you will notice that there is uh, no Plone site listed here. Uh, if you use the installers, you get given a Plone site for free, but if you use build out, the method we've just used, uh, you don't get given a Plone site, you actually have to make one. And to do that, we uh, go up to this menu at the top right here, and we look for the thing that we can add, which is called Plone Site. There it is. We say we want to add one of those. We give it an ID. Um, we could call it what we like. I'm going to call mine demo. You could call yours Plone or my site or whatever the name of your organization is. You can give it a title. And you click Add. Let's just toggle back to the terminal window and you can see that various stuff goes on. It's making a Plone site for us. Okay, and um, going back to the Zope management interface, we can see that our demo site has been created. Let me just open up another tab. And uh, to access our demo site, we can um, go to localhost 8080. Demo. And there we have it, one clone site.